gentlemen, good day and welcome to Entertainment Network India Limited Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Runjun Jain from ENY Investor Relations. Thank you. And over to you, Ms. Jain. Thank you, Sadhu. Uh, good, e good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Q4 and FI24 earnings call of Entertainment Network India Limited. To take you through the results and answer your questions today, we have management team from the company here represented by Mr. Yatish Maharishi, Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Sanjay Bala, Chief Financial Officer. The financial results and the presentations have been uploaded on the company's website and on the exchanges. Should you need any further information, you can reach out to us at EYIRT. Before we proceed with this call, a disclaimer, please do note that anything said on this call during the course of the introduction and in the document, which reflects the outlook towards the future, or should be considered as a certain forward-looking statement, must be viewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces, I may not be updated from time to time. With that said, I'll hand over to Mr. Yatish. Thank you, Ranjan. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Entertainment Network India Limited, I extend a warm welcome to all of you for joining our quarter four and FI24 earnings call. First of all, thank you for joining us on a Saturday. I trust you had a, the opportunity to review our financial results. Please allow me to provide a brief overview of the same. I am delighted to share that our strong performance continues during the quarter four FY24 as well. The results reflect our consistent effort towards growing the business profitably. Before uh, we move into financial specifics, I would like to highlight that as per India's 103 business combinations, our financial information for comparative periods has been restated to incorporate results from the earlier period of the acquired business. The impact of this restatement is detailed in note number six of Regulation 33 Disclosure. To help our investors' understanding, we have included a condensed statement of operations in our investor presentation prior to the restatement. During the quarter, our overall top line registered a strong growth of 42.4% year-on-year at Rs. 149.3 crores, solidifying our commitment to innovation and customer needs. Both our segments, FCT and non-FCT, reported a robust growth of 26.4% and 48.1% respectively. EBITDA for the quarter, excluding the digital and Ghana business, stood at Rs. 26 crores as compared to Rs. 23 crores in the previous year. This is translating to EBITDA margin of 27% for the quarter, which is an improvement by 400 basis points year on year. FCT statement continues to exceed industry benchmarks, underscoring our leadership position both in volume and value. In the quarter, our volume market share rose to 25.9%, marking a significant improvement of 190 basis points year on year. The non FCD segment observed a commendable 48.1% growth in quarter, buoyed by the return of our marquee old properties like SBI Green Marathon, Spell B, and, and others. Alongside revenue growth, we achieved impressive growth, gross profit margin of 39.1% and an EBITDA margin of 25.5% in the non FCD business. Regarding FY24 figures, at a full year level, the company achieved a consolidated revenue of almost 500 crores. For our domestic operations, excluding digital in Ghana, revenue stood at 453.7 crores in the year, compared to 412.6 in the previous year. Furthermore, in, the, in FY24, we reported an EBITDA margin of 27.6%, marking an improvement of approximately 500 basis points from the previous year. Additionally, at the full year level, our non FCT business maintained a gross profit margin of 47.6% and an EBITDA margin of 33.6%. The strong top line growth and substantial improvement in EBITDA led to a remarkable boost in the PAT, which has moved from Rs. 23.1 crores in the quarter FY24 from Rs. 17.3 in the quarter 4 FY23. Post COVID, for the first time, we have reported profit at at net profit in all quarters, which has led to a remarkable improvement in the PAT during the financial year 24 at Rs. 50.6 crores from Rs. 2.34 crores in FI23. Regarding our digital endeavors, we have significantly bolstered our efforts 
following the acquisition of Ghana. In the quarter FY24, our digital revenues amounted to Rs. 20.3 crores, representing almost 24.4% of our radio revenues. Throughout FY24, our digital revenues totaled 47 crores, accounting for 15.3% of our radio revenues. We are actively working towards making ENIL as a, as a complete media entertainment company from just being a radio company. Another heartening development is that our international market turned positive during FY24 and I reported an EBITDA of 3.3 crores. I am also happy to announce that our board of directors has proposed a dividend of Rs 1.5 per share. In conclusion, our primary objective remains maximization of shareholder value on the back of sustainable growth and profitability. With that, I would like to invite any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets only while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Again, participants, if you wish to ask questions, please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Sunit Majumdar from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Um, hello. Hi, Sumit. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so I had a few part question. Uh, like firstly, like uh, could you share how much was the revenue for Ghana in Q4 uh, FI24 and in uh, FI24 overall? And secondly, where is the revenue being rep uh, reported? In, that, in which segment is the Ghana revenue? Okay. Yeah, okay. Do we answer this or you have another question also, Smith? No, I I'm done with my question. Okay. So, uh, as we had last, in the last uh, meeting also, said we required Ghana only on December. So, it's a four month revenue. And a four month revenue clocks about 12.83 crores. And it's reported part of the digital segment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prashant Apshinde from who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, this is Prashant. Uh, could you elaborate about the Saudi's plan uh, in more detail and also uh, what's the company's policy going forward for the digital revenue uh, do uh, you have any specific plan for digital revenue to increase? Uh, so please elaborate on As I uh, understood you, the first question was your, you wanted to know about the Saudi plan and the second was on the digital plans, correct? Yes. Yes. So on the Saudi plans, we have, uh, you know, got into a partnership with, with one of our partners there who has acquired radio licenses. So we are in the midst of now evaluating uh, and running the stations there. Uh, so we're setting up uh, radio stations in Saudi Arabia. The way we look at it, Saudi Arabia is one of the largest uh, economies which will grow in the next few years, and we are very excited about it, not just from radio revenues, but if you look at ENIL uh, business, is not just radio. So we are very excited about radio events and digital business there. So it's in the initial stages. Uh, as we go along in the coming quarters, we'll have more detailed uh, discussion on Saudi. Uh, it's still yeah, the MO is yet to sign. Uh, we have done a uh, you know first level of interest with the Saudi partner, where we believe uh, as a business, as entertainment business in Saudi, looks very exciting. And um, and so we are waking about it. In the coming quarters, we'll be able to share much more information on the Saudi operation. But having said that, as I said. It's a very exciting market to be in, um, so we look forward uh, for that market uh, penetration. On the digital uh, side, our commitment to to transform ENIL from just being a radio company to a multimedia company remains steadfast. Uh, in that line, if you look at, we acquired Ghana, which is a music uh, streaming service, um, and we have been very, very careful about that. We, we, we are very sincere about, you know, uh, how do we look at the business and as I said our commitment is always profitable growth. So
So for Ghana, the way we look at it is going to be a pure subscription service and not a free service. Uh, coming from uh, two decades of music curation experience in this country, ENL has been the you know foremost player uh, who curated music and played music uh, where people discovered music in India. So from being a terrestrial radio company and also having an online presence on music, we are in the best uh, available, available space to garner more share and garner uh, more and more uh, share of the audio entertainment space in India. So from a perspective of digital, uh, we have multifold strategies. One is acquisition of Ghana, which has led to playing music online, um, and it's a pure play subscription business. The other is we also believe our influencer marketing and, and our Mitchie Plus social media assets, which also helps us in driving our digital growth. So the way we look at our strength of 300 content people across the country, while we understand nuances of uh, different parts of the country and we understand language where language is also and our content people across the market helps us to devise new and new content strategy which is pure digital led and acquire revenues for it. So from a perspective it's a, it's a mix on digital both on video content and music streaming service. Does that answer Prashant? Answer. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, if you have questions, please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Sneha Jain from SKS Capital. Please go ahead. Madam sir, thank you for the opportunity. I just wanted to ask, uh, I mean, what would be the future growth drivers for the industry? Like, uh, which segments are we looking from real estate? And probably we'll see a decline in the government advertising. So what uh, do you think is the trend going to be in the coming uh, near-term future? Thanks, Neha. Uh, Neha, as I understand, you, you meant only the business of radio, correct? Yeah, yeah. So the, yes, you're right. You know, government spends increase prior to the central elections, uh, but that's from a, from a central government point of view. We believe the state governments are also active and, and the way elections are happening across the year. So if you look at this year, you will have Maharashtra elections and other states elections also coming in and all state governments now spend. So yes, there has been, there will be some drop from the way a central government spends money in the, first, uh, in the last year of election compared to a first year after election. So there will be some drop in it. But um, I believe there will be some bit of compensation from the state governments also. Uh, coming to other categories, uh, we are very buoyant about real estate, uh, BFSI, uh, a couple of categories which are very, very active. And as we've been telling in the last four quarters, radio business has moved towards more on the retail side than corporate. So the shop front business has also increased. You know, the contribution of retail clients has now increased to almost 65%. A uh, good part about radio industry is it's never been dependent on one specific category. Our biggest category has never been more than 10 or 12 percent. So, you know, even if, uh, you know, the way we look at India as a case ship recovery and all, uh, there are some sectors which will always keep firing for the radio industry. Uh, so I don't see any any reason for worry on, on the growth part. Only thing is it's going to be a volume-led growth rather than what we would have ideally desired to be a, a price-led growth. Uh, we have enough headroom available uh, for volume to grow and we've been increasing our market share and being leaders, we'll be, we are best placed to garner more market share also and also look at very positive about the growth in the radio industry. Uh, that helps. And so except for uh, radio, what do you think would be the other uh, growth drivers for the company? So. Multiple things, if you look at our non-FCD business, which is generally very edge to specific, the events, activation uh, business, which is generally very heavy on the second half of the year. And you would have seen our quarter three and quarter four results. We have done really, really well. So we remain very, very optimistic. All the reports suggest the events, activation business will outgrow the traditional medium growth. Uh, we do almost about 250 events in a year. So we are very positive and optimistic of the event business, but that has a skew over the edge two. So if I look at a full year basis, yes, the event and activation business is also one big lever where we believe uh, uh, there will be a lot of growth opportunities for us. 
Uh, so the even business would be around, I mean, approximately 10 to 12 percent uh, growth that you're seeing. Yeah, easily on that part. Okay. That's it. It will, out, it will outgrow the traditional medium growth. All right, got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ketan Atavle from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. I wanted to know a bit more on the radio yield part. So, how will the yield is this quarter and uh, when do we expect them to recover? And secondly, I also wanted the revenue and margin guidance for FY25 and FY26. Okay, so the way we look at, uh, thanks Kevin for the question. Uh, so the yield has improved this quarter, but that's been largely driven by the political advertisement and some government advertisement. Uh, unfortunately, we believe uh, the yields will stay. Good part is that it's not further dropping, so it's now stabilized at a level over the last four quarters, and we believe same thing will continue for the next two quarters, which is quarter one and quarter two. Uh, so we see some price hike happening in the festival period. Generally, media pricing uh, happens. It, it's a supply and demand uh, case. The pricing yields will depend on that. And we believe some bit of pricing hike happening in the in the second half of the year. Uh, in the first two quarters, we don't believe that there is much price change. Uh, it's generally uh, slow quarters in the first first half of the year. So that's one part. Um, we have been, you know, our our aim and our coming to our second question on on guidance is generally don't give guidance, but you can look at from our four quarters. We have been very focused on profitable growth, and we have been improving our margins quarter on quarter. And if you look at FY23 versus FY24, our margins have improved. So our constant endeavor towards the team has always been, you know, gunning for profitable growth and not just play vanilla growth. So that objective will always remain for us. Um, as we do our uh, existing business of radio events um, and multimedia solutions, and while we drive growth from our digital endeavor of Ghana and other digital opportunities. Okay, sir. thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shikhar Mundra from Vivo Commercial Limited. Please go ahead. I want to understand what are, uh, how would you uh, see your capacity utilization of radio stations currently? Uh, thanks, Shikhar. See, the way we look at, uh, we are well placed. We have enough radio inventory available compared to any of the radio, uh, any of our radio competition. Uh, we are right now at an average of 10 minutes of inventory in the peak season also. So we have enough and more room available for volume growth compared to any of the players. Because uh, as a as a premium player and, a, and as, a, as a leader, we have always been cognizant of the FCT versus the music play out. And that's the reason uh, over, the over the two decades, we have always believed in playing the right amount of inventory. Unfortunately, because of the volume-led growth, there is some bit of yield uh, volume available, uh, and that's the reason we are in the best pace. Uh, we believe other radio comp radio players have already maxed out on inventory, and that's the reason um, it will play out in the H2 also, where we see some price growth also happening because of that reason. Uh, but having said that, your company Enal has enough uh, volume uh, headroom available uh, for growth. Okay. And, and what kind of growth are we looking for, uh, like a 525 in this traditional radio business, the volume growth and how much price growth we are expecting? Shikhar, uh, as I said, we don't give any guidance, uh, but uh, if you look at from a market, the way the Indian economy looks like, we are very, very optimistic about the growth, uh, both on radio, both on FCT and our non-FCT business. Uh, we remain very, very optimistic of the growth. We don't, uh, and traditional media will also have a Everybody was saying, you know, this year traditional media will not grow, but if you have seen the growth, we have delivered a 10% growth on FCD also this year. So we remain very optimistic of the India story, the consumption story across the markets, and that's what we believe in. So in this quarter, like how, how much of this incremental growth came because of elections and how much uh, came from the, you know, uh, the... Uh, uh, the part of the business not related to the election, the advertisement. So elections, elections was very few because you know the election got announced only in the end of March, so there were only some bit of elections in the quarter. Largely, it was driven by government business. In, in a way, it contributed about almost 27 to 28 percent of our revenues. But that happens in any 
quarter, preceding quarter of elections generally. Uh, it's not that, you know, the other business was not coming in because we cap inventory, so we take the right business and as election and government inventory comes at a, at a better yield, we prefer that business. So that contribution always goes up in the quarter. Okay, okay. So, so I'm just trying to say if elections would not have happened, we would have still uh, given, uh, I mean, the numbers would have been more or less the same, uh, like we would have done other ads instead of the government spending, uh, government yeah. ads. More, more or less, you are right. Okay, okay. And, and what was the spending like in quarter three for the go government spending? What was the government spending in quarter three? See, the way you look at it is government uh, over a year has been almost about 10 to 12 percent uh, business coming to the industry. It had fallen down in quarter in the previous year. This last, if you look at just quarter three and quarter four, it's almost about 10 percent contribution to the radio business. Okay. 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 Got it. Got it. And, and, and for the digital, uh, business, like, uh, how, how do we look at it? So, it, is it a break even right now or we are still at losses at EBITDA level for the digital part of the business? We have acquired Ghana in just four months ago, as I said, from December. Uh, yeah. and as I said, it's going to be a subscription led business. Uh, we stabilize the business. We believe Ghana will become break even in two to three years time. Uh, till that time, it's going to be an investment. I don't see it as loss, but it's an investment. In, in a product which we believe will deliver uh, great results for us as a company. Okay, so, so that that's the Ghana part of the business. But what about except Ghana, the other digital part of the business? Because Ghana did 4.83 crore. Except that we did, I think, around uh, 24 crores in digital revenue. If I'm not wrong. Yeah, so the way we look at it, there are multiple uh, things in and digital. Uh, I was telling about the Ghana, the major losses uh, or the investment goals in the Ghana business. The other business is largely profitable because it comes as, as part of our digital offerings of, you know, uh, affiliate revenues from YouTube, Instagram and also there's, there's no loss. It's more of, you know, how do you leverage your social media assets? How do you leverage your RG as influencers? So that business is always there. We do a lot of original content which we have been doing over the years of like a Karina Kapoor Khan show or a Gauri Khan show uh, where we make revenue out of sponsorship and the digital revenues. So those businesses are generally profitable. Uh, it's the investment at a, and if you look at uh, Ghana came in December, before that we had a Minchi Plus as a platform, which was also an investment phase. With Ghana coming in, that platform becomes one platform only. So it's not going to be, the loss is not going to be in Minchi Plus and Ghana, it's just one platform now. And we believe in, in the same uh, investment, we'll have a better product, which is audio stories, podcast, and music combined with uh, our, our, you know, our reach across the country. It's a much better product and, and we are well placed. So the investment is going to remain specifically only on Ghana. Okay, okay. So, so what I'm trying to understand, you know, as an investor, because this is digital, we have been like investing for the past like six, three, four years. I'm not wrong, and so I understand digital for uh, business first requires a lot of investment, and then it gives you a kind of a J curve type of return. So, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, when will be that phase when you know we stop investing and we you know start monetizing the kind of things we have built, the type of uh, the type of subscriber base on YouTube we have built and. And the, 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 maybe the music library which you are building in Ghana. So when will we start monetizing it actually? You know, when will it start to get reflecting in numbers? So Shikhar, if you look at a couple of things. One, we we started your investment digital only two years back and not four or five years back. So two years back we started our Mitsi Plus app. So that's one point. The second part on Ghana, we have a stable base of subscribers. It's a paid subscription business. Um, we believe we need a couple of years to market it because the product was not marketed in out of sight. It's a great brand, a lot of uh, brand salience which is there. If you, you know, the search optimization of Ghana is very, very strong. So two brands, ENIL and Ghana coming together, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a great partnership to be in. Uh, it will take a couple of years to, to invest into it to break even. So our, our assumption is between two to three years, Ghana on a self, uh, a self model also will become profitable. But we have enough enough avenues available to sustain it. Um, as I said, you know, you have to get your tech right. So there is investment on tech. It's a dynamic product. So you invest in tech. Content was not there. So the content cost is going up. So there is tech cost, uh, carrying cost of um, 
you know, cloud and all. So for the next two years, we believe there will be some investment, and in two to three years time, Ghana on its own will become profitable or make it to start with. Got, got it, got it. And, and do we plan to like start acquiring more things and like, like the way we acquire Ghana, do we plan to uh, acquire uh, certain more things or do we, I mean, G plus plus Ghana will be enough for the next two, three years and then we'll plan to, you know, monetize them later. Like, what's the plan? See, the way we look at it, we have enough on the plate right now, uh, but any in- interesting opportunity comes in, you always look evaluated. So it's not that we close our ears completely. But uh, you're right, uh, with Ghana, with our non std strategy and, and the radio growth, uh, we are well placed for it. Uh, but if any interesting opportunity comes in, we'll always uh, evaluate it for sure. Okay, got it, got it. Thank you. I'll, I'll, thank you very much. I'll join the queue back for further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Shigar. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Dwanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Atish. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. So, uh, my first question is, uh, you know, you said that the FTT business grew by 10% uh, this year. Uh, so, uh, two parts to the question. One is, uh, you know, going forward, how do you look at the industry growth? Uh, how should we think about it? Let's say GDP growth at 6 7%. Uh, so, media industry and within that radio how will it grow? And within that, Mirchi being a 25-26% market share, uh, you know, how do we intend to grow? Um, I'm not saying that next year, I'm saying over the next two, three years, how should we think about it? And second, you mentioned that, uh, you know, we are currently at 10 minutes inventory utilization and in the past cycle, we were at, we have gone up to 13, 14 minutes kind of a number. So, uh, given that, uh, how do how should we think about pricing part because uh, generally in the last cycle we were the market leaders and we were the one who were leading the price or yield improvement now we have enough inventory so are we the one who are going to be following that yield improvement uh, again some light on that okay so on the fct growth part uh, yes we had a decent growth this year uh, which is led by volume and market share so it's not just the industry growth, which is yeah, helping us to grow 10%. We had outshone the market, uh, overall market also. From a radio industry point of view, if you look at, you know, I, the way I look at the media industry is in two parts. There is a digital and there is traditional. When you combine both, then you always feel radio industry or traditional media industry is not, not looking so rosy. But from a traditional media industry per se, the radio industry has remained constant as a contribution and we believe a 5 to 7 percent figure for the next five years should not be issue. Anywhere in the world if you look at you know US or radio industry has remained steadfast in that. It's, yes, it's not the golden period of double digit CAGR for the next five years, but a 5 to 7 percent industry growth for radio should remain. The way we look at industry as market leaders is Yes, then uh, in the near future, it's going to be a volume-led growth. And also for us, as Mirchi, the, the growth will come from market share gains also. Um, and that's what we have seen in the last one and a half years. Our market shares have improved drastically, both on volume and value. Uh, on pricing, so that's on, on the, you know, our uh, guidance or per se, you know, my, my humble estimate of the radio industry uh, for India would be. On your second question on the pricing part, we remain still the premium player. Uh, you know, pricing is, is governed by market factors also. You might want to price your product at a certain level, but there is a volume and a, de- and a supply and a demand case also. So when the market demand is little bit not uh, very, very buoyant, you look for market share gains. So there is some bit of uh, yield which has dropped down post-COVID and it's taken time to recover. Uh, but as I said, you know, uh, in, we believe some bit of price correction will happen um, in the next after in, in the next festival period. So maybe in two quarters down the line, it will happen. It's unfortunate. It's, nobody likes uh, just a volume-led growth, but the pricing is a function of many things. It's not just a uniform price across markets. You know, it's not one India price. It's every price for every station is different. There are many factors of prime time, non-prime time, weekends, weekdays. So it's a complex thing. It's not like other telecom products or anywhere where you have a one standard pricing. So it has multiple factors. 
but uh, having said that, you know, we are we are market leaders. We are a premium player. Our pricing premium still remains very high compared to any of the competition, and we we are committed to it. Um, as we see post elections, the India story will 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 come out much better, and all the growth factors we look at the GDP growth. With the economy doing well and the demand coming back, demand coming back across sectors, we will see the price hike, uh, the yields improving much more. Right, yeah, DJ. So my question was more towards that since we have inventory and room for volume growth, I is it that some other players will start that pricing improvement? Is it dependent upon they doing it or? We also think that if the demand comes back and we still have room to increase volume, we may still be able to increase pricing. So that was the context. So, so Daniel, if you look at in our history of two decades, we have been always been very cognizant, as I said, you know, between the between the advertisement to the music player. People come to radio to listen to music, correct? Ads are part of it. You have to be cognizant of the fact that that's what, for the last two decades, our DNA has been very clear that the consumer and the listener comes first. So our the ratio of FCT to songs has always been right. In tough times when inventories are not, when, when the demand has not been great, we we do some a bit of relaxation of inventory. Uh, but we are always very cognizant of that fact. Uh, it's not dependent on competition. We have our own internal guidelines because that's the reason we are leaders in listenership and revenue primarily because of that. Um, that we run less ad, we are a premium radio station and we command higher price. So if we are not dependent on others, it's market factors and some uh, and, and, and the objectives of market share gain that's which leads to it. Uh, it's not a function of you not know, just looking at competition dropping price or competition improving the price. Uh, it's multiple factors. Uh, having said that, being leaders, we will drive the price uh, increase in the industry. Okay, got it. Uh, and second question on the digital side. Uh, so, uh, you know, you talked about we being in investment mode and we will remain like that for next two, three years. Uh, so, uh, so thinking about this, you guys have any kind of a number you marked or that or a feeling beyond which you would then not invest because the the concern uh, from the investing side is that uh, whatever profit that we generate in the radio, if we continue to invest higher and higher amount on the digital side, then the actual profitability may not show up uh, in the interim. So how how you guys think about it? So the way we look at it is, you know, as a if you look at the industry, everybody intends to become a multimedia company. So, you know, when you look at traditional and digital, uh, if you don't, Play both the games of traditional and digital. That's not the right way to look at it. In a in a technology impacted, digital impacted world, you have to be playing both. We have to be playing both. So the way we look at, yes, radio remains a cash cow for us, and we will drive our profitability from from there, being very efficient and being market leaders. That will be there. But being a future uh, looking company and, a, and making your company future centric, also digital plays a large role. Uh, we are very cognizant of the fact how much we invest in it, um, and if you look at uh, a two to three year horizon in a in a in a digital industry investment for two three years, we believe is is not is is not very very high. Uh, and and if you look at revenues also coming from Ghana in a four months, you already delivered twelve crores revenue. It's not that you know you are building a product from ground zero. Uh, there is a strong strong affinity to the brand. We understand the, the music space very well compared to any other competition. So we believe what we have taken on digital side on Ghana, that's just one part of digital. Ghana is not just the only part, but yes, it's a, one of the main levers of our digital business. We believe a two to three year investment horizon is, is a good looking horizon to break even. In today's time, when you look at all digital startups and all, if you look at from that perspective, we are well placed. And because we are playing the game to our strength, we understand um, you know the Indian market very well, the Indian music choices very well. So compared with techno uh, combined with technology and human intervention, we are well placed on it. So our investment uh, bets are looking for two to three years. We have done only two years of it. We pivoted from just being a non-music app to a now a much more holistic product. And with the horizon of two to three years, I think uh, we are well placed on it, uh, Daniel.
it's not uh, it's not very very it's large quantity uh, we are cognizant of the profitability part as i said it's not just about radio business but at the overall level e and i remains very very uh, you know uh, we we look at profitability at, at at every level so from that perspective i can assure you that from a company's point of view we will be very cognizant of that fact but i think for two years of investment in digital uh with a with a revenue which is already there and with our knowledge base of the country in the music space we are very very well placed to deliver a more holistic me- uh, media and entertainment company in the near future great great thanks abhishek for a very detailed answer and wish you all the best thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of deepak shankar from trust line pmr please go ahead Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, so, firstly, from my side, uh, sir, can you uh, split the breakup uh, between this uh, total uh, digital revenues you have uh, given, the 20 crore, Ghana, the rest of the numbers? So, on a full year basis, our total revenue is about 20 crore. You wanted for the quarter or uh, or the full year basis? Quarter. what you want to okay. take yes sir yes sir so on the quarter we have done about 20.27 crores of digital revenues our platform yes. revenues are 15.7 crores and uh, other revenues are about 4.57 crores okay and uh, what about this mms and other solutions multimedia solutions uh, this quarter delivered about 17.5 crores and and the activation and event business was almost about 15 crores sorry 20 crores so this include some part of uh, the digital also yes i at the digital component which i said 4.5 crores is part of multimedia solutions also some some part of it is part of multimedia solutions also. okay 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 Okay. 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 Okay.
funnel available to acquire more and more subscribers. It is up to individual players to give a better product, better experience to consumer at the right price will help us drive subscription and drive Ghana revenues. Uh, our numbers, our uh, budget planning on Ghana, we believe in the next two to three years will make it profitable um, at a right price um, and a subscription base of about three million subscribers. Okay, okay. So, sir, thanks for all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Kapoor from Benchmark Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I wanted some clarification on the published numbers. In the press release and in your earlier remarks also, you, you allude to, you know, FY24 fat as 50 crores. Uh, this doesn't match with the PNL. Can you can you please uh, tell me how this crore number is arrived? Which number is alluded to as a fact? I'll ask Sanjay to answer this. Yeah. Uh, hi, Deepak. So basically, uh, if you have to take care of, so there is a mismatch which you are mentioning. I will request yeah. you to move, uh, from the ad copy part of it. Go to refer. Uh, go and refer to note number six. See, basically what is happening that because of the application of index 103, uh, we yeah. had to uh, do the restatements of the numbers. That is, a, okay. that's how the uh, audits and the regulations uh, compel us to do. Now, uh, as you must have seen, that FY24 number, we have uh, shown the PAT at 50 crore. And I will tell you that if you go back to uh, the ref, uh, note number six, you will find that detailing we have given about the acquisition of the business of Ghana. So the impact of that acquisition, if you deduct it, then you will find out the uh, differential number. It is not a mismatch actually, it is a restatement. Okay. So. Uh... If we remove the impact of restatements, the PAT would have been 50 crores. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, uh, Q3 versus Q4, there's a jump of almost 10 crores in other expense. Can you throw some light on this? Yeah, sure. I'll do that. Just a moment. Just a moment, uh, Deepak. Just a moment. Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, major part, major contributor of that uh, increase of co other expense cost uh, by 10 crore is uh, because of the Ghana music cost. So, just a small uh, heads up on that. Ghana as a music app uh, is a platform which uh, helps the listener to listen to his favorite music. Now, when we do that, back to back, we have to have the arrangement with the music levels because uh, in ENIL, we do not uh, own any IPR of any of the music, okay? So, these mm -hmm. are technically, the IPR of the music is owned by all music levels like Saregama, T-Series, Tips, Venus and everybody, Sony. So, now, uh, this is the first quarter when you are kind of seeing the impact of uh, Ghana coming to ENIL, both on the side of revenue as well as the cost. Now, if we talk about this uh, 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 10 crore differential, the approximate uh, amount of the content cost due to Ghana would be close to 7, 7.5 crore. Okay, noted. So this is not a one-off, it is likely to be then future also, this is just content cost with Ghana. Of course, yes. Deepak, because uh, if I am taking something on the revenue, I have to uh, take something on the cost relevant uh, Got it. component. Got it. Right? So it's part of the same investment what we are talking about, Deepak, on the Ghana business, on revenue and, co and the cost front. Both will reflect into it. Great, great. That's clear. Just one last question. Uh, did, did the subscriber numbers for Ghana, uh, did they go up the last quarter, they're stable or... Which so, Deepak, it's too early. As I said, it's been December only. Uh, 
his subscriber numbers is, is is driven by behavior initial for the first four months our endeavor has been to make the product better get all content there stabilize the product uh, having said that our subscription numbers have remained stable uh, which is a good part uh, and as you see, you've seen we have not even started advertising about it about the product uh, the whole idea and it because we believe that it has so much salience available that remains the subscription numbers have remained stable important for us uh in the last four months and and in the coming couple of quarters is to get the product and the tech really really up there for consumers to see value and have a better experience both on the music side recommendation search um you know interaction with artists how do you look at fan clubs so that that's when the endeavor is going to be uh in the immediate future while we look at building our subscriber base uh it's going to be a journey uh, it's not a quarter on quarter number yes everybody wants and we also gun for more and more subscribers but important is to get your product right the value equation right for the consumers before you look into market got it got it sorry just a book giving question i missed it during the previous uh, conversation what was the gana revenue in fy24 and in q4 fy24 so gana revenue total was about uh, 12.5 crores in the year and uh, in the quarter it was about 9.5 crores 9.5 okay thank you so much thank you thank That's you all. thank you thank you a reminder to all the participants if you have any questions at this moment please press star and 1 the next question is from the line of sunit majumdar from ilara capital please go ahead uh, yeah hello Oh uh, yeah my question has been answered thank you like oh. my follow up question yeah thank you thank you sumit thank you sumit thank you as there are no further questions from the participants i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments thank you sagar uh, again uh, everyone thank you very much for joining on a saturday i extend my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for the continuous support you have been providing to the company through the years i would reiterate that the last year quarter results have been very encouraging we remain focused on profitability and maximizing the shareholders wealth uh thank you very much have a good day guys thank you members of the management on behalf of entertainment network india limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your line